Drive a Rolls Royce? Fine. After you come out of that Bentley, come out of that Ferrari, come out of that Porsche, come out of that car, you still got to repent. That's it. Still got to be baptized mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus Christ. Still must seek the Holy Ghost. You see, the way holiness is set up by God, the rich man got to do the same thing the poor man oh, got to yeah. do. That's oh, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That way, no one can think they're better than the other. That's, That's right. right. Huh? That's right. The rich man got to come do the same thing the poor man has to do. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know. When you die, what you going to take with you? What you going to take? That's it. That's right. What are you going to take with you when you die? Amen. What you to do? Amen. I got any millionaires watching me right now besides giving your money to these devils out there that's telling you a lie? You, you, you know, if you're a millionaire, it's hard as it is for you to be saved. That's, that's right. right. Yes, it is. That's right. It's more easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle Amen. than for a rich man to get in the kingdom. That's right. Oh, glory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's the author and finisher of our faith, and without him, nothing is possible. Welcome to Faith and Gates Ministries. Click that subscribe button, click on the notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Also, to support our ministry, go to our cash app, dollar sign, Fates Gates. That's F-A-T-E-S-G-A-T-E-S. -E now, that was a very powerful word by Pastor Geno Jennings. And the reason why I use Pastor Geno Jennings is because Pastor Geno Jennings this happens to be a rich man, okay? He will never announce that publicly, okay? That's a whole nother story, you know? But the word itself and the gift that God gave Pastor Geno Jennings, a very powerful, charismatic speaker, that word is really what we need to hear, okay? And I believe he's the perfect man to lead us off in this message about Mr. Myron Golden, okay? Also, I'll be using King Solomon as an example. King Solomon, the most prominent, wisest, richest man in the Bible, okay? Wisest second to Christ Jesus, okay? But he was the most richest and prominent man in the Bible, okay? Even King Solomon rebuked, he warned, and condemn the rich. Christ, King Solomon, King David, and Joel, who was also a very wealthy man. You read the scriptures about, about what these men said, they were all condemning the most vocal against the rich. Okay? Yet still, many false prophets or heretics used the scriptures to twist their words. Okay, now we're going to introduce Mr. Myron Golden. Now, currently, he's an investor in digital currencies, and he charges an arm and a leg for his advice, okay, to other wealthy men and women. Okay, according to him, years ago, he used to be a garbage man until Satan offered him the same deal that Jesus declined. And similar to Kevin Samuels, he acquired his wealth in his mid to late 40s, okay? And this is after they used to do blue-collar work. I know Kevin Samuels said that he used to be a bouncer. The older you get, <laughs> and now, I mean, this is, this is tradition. The older men get, the more money they make, okay? And then Satan established this world system to be that way. Because obviously, the older you get, the closer you, you get to, to death. Did you catch that? So the temptation is closer to the end of man's lives. You see, and the older men get, the more greedy they become because they want to get as much out of life as possible. But that's a whole nother subject. Nevertheless, so throughout this series, I'll be providing receipts from Myron's manipulation of God's word. But I want to tell you why I do these type of videos. Romans 16, 17 says, Mark those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. The second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5 says, Examine yourselves whether ye be and the faith. Improve yourselves. Those who are on their way to hell 
are a part of the road, the road map that directs you to heaven. Okay, so every opportunity you get to examine so-called men and women who claim to be of the faith, you're doing so to get closure on your own salvation because Christ commanded us to examine them. Okay, because Byron has said he always look at the subscriber count of those who disagree with him. Well. Satan has way more subscribers than Christ. Okay, there are far more people who subscribe to the doctrine and so many different religions that whom Satan is responsible for deceiving men to adopt the belief systems than they are to the, the true word of Christ. That's why he said, Christ said, narrow is the gate and difficult is the way that leads to eternal life. There are few who are going to find it. You understand? So, in Myron Golden's argument for money in the Bible, it, he bases it on similar premises. So, the title of this first video, which I, I've broken down of uh, Myron Golden's video, Live Like a Millionaire or on Your Way to Becoming One. So, all this guy's talking about is money, and he's using the scriptures to support that. So I won't I won't play the entire video. I only play segments of it, and I'll interrupt every now and then and give my take according to the scriptures. Golden here, and today I'm going to be talking about how to get rich, part two. And some people have asked in the comments from the last video, like, why do you talk about? Or they don't even say why to you because when people like have discussed, they don't refer to you as you. They refer to you as this guy, the false prophet, the whatever, the antichrist, whatever they want to call you. So I'm going to tell you why I talk about money so much. Because it's something that affects every single solitary day of our lives. It's the thing that most people spend most of their time doing, figuring out how to get money. And I think the problem that people have with me talking about get, getting rich is the fact that they've not even defined for themselves what rich is. Rich is not acquiring one million plus Fed Reserve notes that exalt the serpent as a deity. Okay, that's what the dollar bill does. They they put their God, their false God, on the do dollar bill, and they model it after Egyptian, ancient Egyptian practices, okay, of the occult. They adopt, they adopt those false belief systems, okay, and they exalt their God on the back of the dollar bill. So that's all money is, is paper. Paper that man has said, man has given his word as uh, collateral uh, to, to support the fina financial systems to, to, to back up capital goods. Okay, water, land, food, things that really matter. That's all paper money is. Because compared to most of the people in the world, see, I talk about getting rich because I, I use the term rich. And the reason I use the term rich is because the Bible uses the term rich. And so I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with the term rich. I don't have a problem with the term wealthy. I don't have a problem with the term abundant. I don't have a problem with the term prosperity or prosperous. I don't have a problem with any of those. They're all in the Bible. And if you got a problem with him, like take it up with God. You don't have to take it up with God. He already said, woe to you who are rich. For you already received your comfort. He said that in Luke chapter 6, verse 24. And also Revelation chapter 18, verse 17, it says the merchants and the kings of the earth in one hour, all their great riches came to nothing. Ezekiel chapter 30, verse 3 says, Woe to the day, the time of the Gentiles. Their wealth is to be taken away okay all of the gentile nations are the, the nations whom are in power right now okay i don't have time to get into that so the true definition of rich is inheriting eternal life if you inherit eternal life okay then you are truly rich you good for eternity but what does it good for a man to gain a whole world and lose his soul 
Okay, that's why Christ flipped it the other way around. He says it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it's for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Meaning it's extremely difficult, if possible at all. Okay, I, I personally don't believe technically that man would be rich if he was rich throughout his lifetime and entered the kingdom of God. There would have to be some type of repentance. God would have to search his heart and see that he's truly sincere. There's a lot that go into the salvation thing. Okay, guys like this will lead you straight to hell. Okay, Christ said, it's the, the, don't even store up your treasures on earth where thieves break in and moth and rust destroy, but store it up in heaven. So, I mean, Satan, being the God of this world, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what Revelation 18, 17 is really saying that the accounts will be digital. <laughs> That's the only way Satan is going to be able to steal everything. Just, just click it with the click of a button. Everyone's account go to zero. That's, that's, that's why the merchants of the earth, the scriptures say they're going to be, they're going to be crying. They're going to be weeping because all their riches came to nothing. So this is how the accounts of digital currencies they are going to be deleted because God has given Satan dominion over the earth for a period of time. This is his system. Again, they exalt him on the back of the dollar bill. This is why Christ told the rich young ruler, he told him, look, let's go sell everything you own and give it to the poor because you'll never get to swallow down what you've accumulated. <laughs> when you eat a plate, to think about it. When you eat a plate of food, you eat some spaghetti with some fish and some macaroni and cheese and you're hungry, okay? You, you've worked for that meal. You will finish that plate or finish most of it, okay? Even if you got a full stomach halfway into the meal, you, you, you've, ate, you've eaten half of the meal, okay? That doesn't work with a, a rich man always leaves more than what he acquires what he acquired in his life, even if he leaves it to his son, the son's going to repeat the same process most likely that he did. If he don't lose, if he don't lose it or someone robs him of it uh, through some bad investment or something in his lifetime, he will never get to swallow down in enjoyment all the riches that he acquired. The uh, uh, book of uh, Ecclesiastes says this is an evil affliction. Okay, and there's another scripture that says God, God, it is God who makes the man, the rich man busy. He gives, he gives him something to do so that he's busy. He spends his life being busy, concerned about his riches till the day that he dies. Then it's the day of judgment. You see that? Job chapter 20, verse 15 says right before a rich man dies. God has his riches out of his belly and sure he never swallows them down. Right. Don't take it up with me. But the reason I talk about these things is because they are important. People say, well, but Jesus was poor. OK, you like I understand that you think Jesus was poor, but just because you think that doesn't mean it was true. Um, and um, the fact like I, and I asked somebody that question in the comments and I said, if Jesus was poor, why do you need a treasurer? Okay, remember, Satan is the god of this world. If he wasn't, then Christ would have rebuked him when he promised him the world. And if Christ was rich, Satan wouldn't have even tempted him with riches. Christ didn't even have a place to lay his head. In fact, saying that Christ was rich. That just further disproves what you're saying. Christ preached against the rich. And he gave up everything. Including his life. At the tender age of 33. So what, what much more did you want him to give up? How, how deep are you going to dig a hole to try to prove that Christ was rich? Which he wasn't. But his, his precious life 
at the age of 33, losing it at that age, especially him being a righteous man who did not sin, is worth more than anything money can buy. And the scriptures don't even say there was any inheritance that he left to his family or anything. The scriptures don't don't say anything about that. It talks about the keys to the kingdom and the Holy Spirit that he left to, to those who would come after him. Okay? So what you're saying is completely, just obviously, blatantly false. That's why Christ was not a hypocrite for telling the rich young ruler to sell everything he had and give it to the poor. He wouldn't ask him to do something that he had not done or was not willing to do. So according to you, Mr. Golden, you're not rich if you're spending most of what you got. And I'm sure you're aware, Mr. Golden, that being rich means you have wealthy friends. Well, in Christ's time, the Pharisees, the Jews, and the Romans, they were all wealthy men. And they was responsible for his crucifixion. The Roman government charged him as a criminal for the same reason people gave into his treasury. Okay, so for simply healing the people. The Pharisees was watching to see whether he would heal on the Sabbath day. These were the things they were accusing him of, for healing people, doing honest work. Okay? So, otherwise, the Romans would have sanctioned, they would have sponsored, and they would have even pardoned what he had done if Christ was a rich man. Okay? Wealth buys you friends, Mr. Golden. So that's just like if the U.S. government charged you with running a criminal enterprise for exchanging digital currencies or acquiring digital currencies. And, you know, you do what you do, and you, even if you gave it to the poor. Okay, that would that would be how you would use this to compare to what Christ went through. And it still wouldn't compare. Because you, you, what you do for a living is acquiring digital currencies. Christ was doing the work of the Father. You see that? He, he got crucified for doing the work of the Father. Okay, so you cannot compare this false doctrine as a matter of fact, that's an abomination. So compare what you're talking about to the life of Christ. Also, Christ even said if this was his kingdom, then his servants would fight to uphold it. In Ezekiel chapter 30, verse 6, it says those who uphold Egypt shall fall. Okay? It's talking about spiritual Egypt, the same way the scriptures mention spiritual Sodom. And they said he needed a treasurer just to distribute money to the poor. Where did they get the money to distribute to the poor? Like, let's think all the way through our stuff. The reason I talk, the reason I talk to people about money is because it's one of the most important things in their lives. It's one of the most important things in our lives. It's one of the most important things in life. Um, and if you don't have any, you feel like you can't breathe. So it's right up there with oxygen, right? It's not as important as oxygen, but it feels like it is sometimes, right? And so I talk about getting rich because getting rich is what people know they are looking for. And this, I, I believe if Jesus were here today, I can't prove this, but I can believe it. Um, I believe if Jesus were here today, that he would talk to people about things that matter to them. Why? Because that's what he did in the Bible. If people were hungry, he fed them right? If they were thirsty, he gave them something to drink, right? If they were sick, he healed them. Jesus always ministered to the needs that people knew they had before he ministered to the need that he knew, that he knew they had. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Jesus feeding the poor has nothing to do with riches. And so that's, the, that's where some of you are stuck. You're, you've been so steeped into religion from your churches, and you get all your doctrine from the pastor, you don't study the Bible for yourself. Now, you, you may disagree with some conclusion I come to, I've come to, but if, if you're going to disagree, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. If you're going to disagree with something I teach from the Bible, like study the Bible for yourself. Don't get all your doctrine from the pastor. 
actually the modern day apostate church is teaching the same false doctrine that you are. The word of God is scarce. Because there are a lot of pastors who don't study. And I'm telling you, if I'm teaching something, you can take it to the bank. I've studied it. So anyway, so that's why I talk about money, because it's important, right? And I'm, I, it doesn't bother me. And the reason I'm being so intense about it is because I don't want the few people who have a problem with the stuff I share to negatively imp- affect or p- impact the people who came for exactly what I'm teaching, right? There is a reason. There is a reason. And I'm not, I am not fishing for video views and likes and comments, but the reality is there's a reason a lot of people, there's a reason we're getting 1.4 million views a month. Once again, Satan gets a billion times more views than Christ, do. Views prove absolutely nothing. On this channel. And it's not because I am whatever. I'm not even theatrical. I'm a, I'm a little theatrical, so I guess I am. Um, um, so, so anyway, so that's why I teach about money. And I'm going to keep teaching about money. I'm going to teach, keep teaching about the Bible. And I don't think those subjects are diametrically opposed. In fact, the Bible talks a lot about money. And it talks a lot about business. And if, it, and if, if you haven't seen it, maybe it's because you've been reading the Bible through your religious lenses. And you put your religious lens in, lenses on. And all you see when you read the Bible is religion. But the reality is, the Bible is not a book about religion. And I know I'm really going to get some flack over that one. Uh, fasting, prayer. Meditation on the word, holiness, obedience, ministering, that's a religion. Being a student and disciple of Christ is the religion, dude. They're doing it religiously. All religion is is practice. What do you practice? It contains religion, but it's not about religion. More on that from another video. Okay, so there. Time is greater than money. Time is more valuable than money. It's better than money. It's greater than money. But eternity is more valuable than time, which is just time. All time is is a prison for this meat suit. Why? Because if you run out of money, you can always get more. But if you run out of time, it's game over, right? And so I think all of us would agree. Like if I were to say, okay, I'll write you. Anybody here um, in this audience today, I will happily write you a Let's just say a $500,000 check today. In fact, I'll write you a million dollar check today. Who wants it? All hands are up. Okay. All hands are up. Okay, cool. But what if I made the stipulation, if I write you a million dollar check today, you have to end your life today. Now who wants it? Mr. Golden, that's the deal Satan is granted 10,000 times per day when wealthy men go into eternity. What is it good for a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Nobody wants it. Why? Because you already intuitively know that time is greater than money. See, so we see that that's a lie. However, let's, t- let's reverse the, let's like, let's like flip the script. What if you found out today that you had a terminal illness and you had a million dollars just kind of laying there, it's in your retirement account, or maybe it's in your retirement account, or maybe it's in, a, um, in your safe at your house, or, or it's, you have a million dollars worth of cryptocurrency or whatever, and let's say you find out you have a terminal disease, insurance doesn't cover the remedy for it, the remedy is $1 million, and it's worked 100% of the time for everybody who's ever used it. How many of you would spend your million dollars on that remedy? Right, why? Because to you, the time is more valuable than the money. Right? So we already know that time is not money, but we say time is money. Now, so you say, Myron, why do you say that's a damaging lie? Here's why I say it's a damaging lie. Because if I go through life on a conscious level saying time is money, time is money, I'll act as if time is money, time is money. And what I'll do is I'll sell a whole bunch of my time for a little bit of somebody else's money because I value them both equally. Or most people actually value money more than they value time in their everyday life, how they live, even though they consciously or subconsciously realize that the time is greater than the money. And so, so if I believe that time is money, here's what's going to happen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to waste a whole bunch of time trying to save a little bit of money. I don't do that, right? And the reason I don't do that is because, because like, I only have a limited amount of time on this earth. It is appointed unto man once to die and after this is judgment. Yes. It's appointed unto man wants to die and end the judgment. But the scriptures state the genuineness of your faith is more precious than gold. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So 
If you can't please God, you can't enter the kingdom of God. So, Mr. Golden, if you can examine the top 100 wealthiest men alive and tell me if they serve the God of the Bible, then maybe you can explain what the heck does money have to do with eternal life. In fact, Peter said, your money perish with you. So I know that I'm going to die. Like, that's going to that's gonna happen unless Christ returns before I die. So I'm just like, I'm, I'm going to live my life to the fullest, and I know that I'm probably going to die. Now, so if I believe that the lie that time is money, what I'm going to do is I'm going to waste a whole lot of time trying to save a little bit of money, right? And I don't believe in wasting time to save money. That's why, and I know, this, I don't want this to sound condescending or snooty, because I'm not snooty. I'm, a, I'm a just a regular dude. I'm not condescending. I'm not snooty. But this is like my belief. Like right now, our cleaning lady is at our house cleaning. My wife knows how to clean. My wife likes to clean. My wife didn't even want a cleaning lady, but that's okay. I wanted a cleaning lady because I wanted to be able to spend more time with my wife instead of her cleaning the house when I'm at home. So it just made sense to me, right? So that's why, right, that's why I pay a company to cut my grass. Why? Why? Because I'd rather pay them. They can cut the grass better and more efficiently, and it doesn't waste my time. I value my time more than I value money. That's why right now there's a car wash company that comes to my office every Wednesday. They're out there washing my car right now. Why? Because I value my time. I'm not going to wash my car. I'm not going to cut my grass. I'm not going to fix my toilet. Why? And I, because I would rather pay somebody the money. Now, here's what I'm going to say. I believe a lot of people, a lot of people who say that they don't really care that much about money, because like if you'll lie about that, you'll lie about other stuff. You heard me say that before, right? Um, so uh, a lot of people say they don't care that much about money. They will do something themselves so they don't have to pay somebody else to do it. I would rather pay somebody else to do it so I don't have to do it. It just makes more sense. Right. So so this is so the other problem with the whole believing time is money is uh, time is money lie is if I believe that time is money, what I'll do, not only will I waste a whole bunch of time trying to save a little bit of money, I'll sell a whole bunch of my time for a little bit of somebody else's money. Right. And so uh, that's always like a bad idea. So instead of doing that, maybe I should do what the scripture teaches. I don't know. Does the scripture say anything about time and money? Maybe. Oh, I think it does. Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 20. I think it says something like, um, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Oh, there it is. Redeeming the time. And go look it up. Don't take my word for it. Here's what the word redeem means. Redeem means to buy back, to rescue from loss, and to improve opportunity. Redeem. Repent. Re restore. Return. The scriptures state that we've been bought with a price. And those who do not bear fruit are the branches cast into the fire. Okay? He's not talking about making money. He's talking about another reword, regeneration. Okay? According to what we do in this body. That determines our incorruptible body. So the scripture tells me clearly to buy back my time, rescue it from loss, and improve my opportunity. Why? Because the days are evil. That word evil is not evil like the devil is evil. Do word studies. If you want to know what the Bible is saying and not just what it says, look up the word. Yes, it is talking about evil because Satan has come down with great wrath because he knows his time is short. Okay? So Christ said, those who forsake their land and possessions to follow him shall inherit eternal life. Why? Because in one hour, again, Revelation 18, 17, in one hour, all their riches became nothing. Okay? I believe James chapter 5, verse 2 says, your riches are corrupted and their wealth is stored up for the righteous. There's another scripture that says the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. Because if you don't know what the words mean, you can't know what the word means, right? Okay, so, so the word evil is difficult in nature. So what the scripture is telling us to do is to buy back our time, rescue it from loss, and improve opportunity because life is hard. That's not what the word says. And in your words... You lied. Buy back time. Money can't buy you back time because you don't know what the morrow may bring.
Okay. Uh, Joel 2.25, God said, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts have eaten, the crawling locusts, the consuming locusts, and the chewing locusts. He may, he may decide to do that in eternity, in the next life. Okay? As all that live godly shall, shall do what? Suffer, suffer persecution. Okay? But Satan don't allow you to just digest this word and acquire riches. No, riches, Solomon even said, ruthless men retain riches. That's what the words say, dude. I'm not trying to hear what you say. The word says, ruthless men retain riches. Solomon also said, do not work hard to be rich. Okay? You ain't mentioned none of these scriptures. And for that to happen, you got to sell everything you own and give it to the poor. But you even have a shot to get into the kingdom. Okay? Because Christ said once you do that, you got to do it for his sake. You can't do it and have a bitter heart because God measures the heart of man. Okay? And also, you just contradicting yourself. Did you not just say a million dollar check is no good to one who must die today? Okay? You were trying what see what he was trying to do was trying to say that okay, the working man that goes and so called exchange his time for dollars, he's losing out on his time. Really, that's the argument that he was trying to make, but he didn't realize it backfired. Because when he when he said, What did he say? He said, The person who has to die today, he said, I'll I'll give any one of you in the audience a million dollar check, but you have to die today. Okay, well, still, no one, none of them know if they're going to die. You don't know if you're going to drop dead the next second. That's what the book of James say. You don't know what tomorrow may bring. Okay? So you're contradicting yourself. I mean, look at Kevin Samuels. Look at Bruce Lee, John F. Kennedy, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jackson. These were all men who died young, who died before their time. They had their fame, which is a vapor. Man's life is just a vapor. It can go out like a vapor of smoke. Okay? At any moment, you can be taken out of here. And another thing is you'll never be 23 years old again. If you can tell me, okay, riches can buy you back years on your life. Okay, and God somehow signed off on it. Okay, you good to go. It buy you back thirty years guarantee. Okay, then 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 you got you got some type of point. If this guy's the, the what in his early sixties? Come on, dude. <laughs> That's why Christ said the rich young ruler. Okay, the rich young ruler. He was young, rich, and powerful, and still he can bite the dust at any moment. So if I'm selling my time, not only am I not doing what the Bible says, I'm doing the exact opposite and wondering why I can't get ahead. Are y'all tracking? Okay, so here's what we got to do. We got to stop believing the, time, the lie that time is money. We got to believe the, the truth that time is greater than money. But here's what we really got to get to. We got to understand that um, time is not just greater than money, but time is infinitely greater than money. Because when you run out of time, you don't get more. You can get more. You don't get more time. When you run out of money, you get more money. Okay. Okay. That's just another way of saying what is it good again for a man to gain the whole world and still lose his soul? Look, this. That's all I have. I'm gonna have to pick this up next time. Be careful with guys whose last name has something to do with money, like Treflo Dollar, Fred Price, Myron Golden. Okay. <laughs> Names, names do mean something, by the way. That's a whole nother video. But uh, these guys are just wolves and sheep clothing.